Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this service of Holy Communion. Uh, welcome to you, the, the uh, group at the front and the group at the back. <laughs> We've got uh, two very distinct groups, and of course, Kevin uh, in splendid isolation. Welcome to you, Kevin. Um, before we begin our service today, I do have a few notices and uh, are some bands of marriage to read, so I will begin with our bands of marriage. Uh, I published the bands of marriage between Adam Sheehan and Sarah Clee, both of St. Evel and single. This is the third time of asking if any of you know any reason in law why these persons may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Thank you. Well, that actually is the sixth time of asking because they had three bands read and then their wedding couldn't go ahead because of COVID. When I think the groom got COVID and therefore the whole thing had to be delayed. And so we're finally going to get there, I hope, after the sixth time of asking. So let's pray for Adam and Sarah now. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on this couple as they prepare yet again to be joined together in holy matrimony. We ask your guidance in their life ahead, your blessing on their family together, and may they be aware and share in your love, both on the day when they are married and always. Amen. So our other notices, you should have in front of you a, um, a welcome sheet which has notices on the front and all the readings for our service on the back. If I could just draw your attention to next Sunday, uh, Remembrance Sunday will be uh, a great number of services in every different place in the benefice, uh, and you'll see there's a huge list of the services there. Um, St. Enida, St. Evel, St. Irvin, St. Morgan, and St. Colum all have their own services of remembrance next week. There's also a 10 a.m. BCP Holy Communion service um, for those who would prefer to um, come to that one. Uh, then I also have a notice that's just dropped down, which is that there is a tier fund quiz on the 20th of November. Uh, where is that being held? At Morganporth Village Hall. At what time? Seven o'clock for seven thirty. Bring your own snacks and drinks. So twentieth uh, of no November, seven o'clock. Uh, tier fund quiz at St Morgan. Uh, sorry, Morgan Porth Village Hall. And then on the back, I have a note saying, uh, "Messy Church, November Messy Church, um, is on the thirteenth and twenty seventh of November, not as previously stated." So I'm not sure what was previously stated, but it's now the 13th and the 27th if you've enjoyed participating in Messy Church. Uh, so I hope you've got a hymn book and also your green communion service with an insert which has Eucharistic prayer E on it, which we'll come to at communion time. So let's now turn to what in my booklet is page four, the first page of our service, and we'll begin our service there together. The Lord be with you. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize his presence with us. As God's people we have gathered, let us worship him together. In the salt sea and the stirring sky, God is with us. In the brave wind and the rugged land, God is with us. On the steep road and the shifting shore, God is with us. Among strangers and friends, at work and at play, God is with us. In joy and sorrow, fellowship and failure, God is with us. Amen. So now we're going to sing our first hymn together. Uh, the hymn board is down here in front of the pulpit. It should be number 106, which is Dear Lord and Father of Mankind.
please sit or kneel as we reflect on the week past, on those things we wish we had not said or done, and those things that we wish we had. Jesus said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. As sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father for forgiveness. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's stand now to say the words of the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now our collect for this Sunday. God, our refuge and strength. Bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end, that earth may know the peace of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please now sit for our reading from Hebrews. The reading today is taken from the book of Hebrews, chapter 9. Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year, with blood that is not his own, for then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. 
After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I speak with wisdom in the name of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please do be seated. To preach on the letter to the Hebrews is not an easy task. It's famously obscure to the modern ear, with a line of argument that requires an understanding of ancient Greek Neoplatonism and Jewish temple practices in order to fully grasp what it's trying to say. And no one really knows who wrote it, although it's often ascribed to uh, St. Paul. Uh, or when it was written. Compared to the known writings of St. Paul and the other writers of the New Testament, it feels like it's in a category all of its own, a kind of academic dissertation intended to satisfy the intellectual needs of a very small niche of believers. So then why preach on it at all? After all, in our readings this week, we have a perfectly fine Old Testament story about Jonah heading off obediently to Nineveh after his little escape in the belly of a whale. And the gospel reading from Mark about Jesus calling the fishermen Simon, Andrew, James and John. Those two readings at least have something very much in common. They both include a call to repentance, and in both cases, a positive response to that call. If you read the Old Testament reading on our welcome sheet, you'll see that Nineveh repents, and God, seeing this, withholds his righteous judgment on their sins. The fishermen, meanwhile, leave everything in response to Jesus' call to repent and believe in the good news of the kingdom of God, and they become Jesus' disciples. If we compare these Old and New Testament stories, we see that the same God is at work, first through Jonah the prophet, and then coming in person in Jesus Christ. We see that God is always asking for his human creations to turn away from selfishness and sin, and instead to see what is on offer in a different way of life, that is known as the kingdom of God. So far, so straightforward. This is a message that still resonates today. We are Christians largely because we want to live more compassionately and we want to live kind and generous lives in a community of others who are dedicated to the same. We want to live in the kingdom of God as beloved children of God, And we want to invite others to join us. In contrast, the letter to the Hebrews is, frankly, complicated. It sets itself the task not only of trying to demonstrate that the life, death and resurrection of Jesus has transformed our way of relating to God and each other, but also to explain exactly how this has happened. It is, in a way using the language of Greek philosophy to try and explain how Jesus fulfilled and surpassed all the reasons and rationales for Jewish temple practices and ritual practices. It is a bit like when we use the modern language of the ego to explain selfishness or refer to a Freudian slip 
even though most of us have never really read Sigmund Freud or Carl Jung. Jackie being the one great exception in this room, I'm sure. Uh, We kind of know what it means, even though we are not ourselves psychologists. Similarly, the writer of Hebrews lived in a place and time when Greek ideas about how heaven and earth related to each other were very widespread. In their general view, things here on earth were not really real, but were rather a poor copy of the heavenly reality, like a shadow on a wall. So from that perspective, our churches or temples, our singing and worship, our prayers and retreats, our religious practices like Holy Communion, all these things would have been considered as vague, shadowy and inferior copies of the real thing which only exists in heaven. This is why the writer says in the Old Covenant, nothing was ever entirely dealt with. The temple high priest had to offer sacrifices for human sin every year, and even he himself was not pure enough, but had to offer the lives of animals to win God's forgiveness. It was like painting the fourth bridge. As soon as you finish, you have to start again. And even then, when you died, you still had to face a divine court to judge you and judge your life. The old covenants never quite got people clean or good enough, which is why so much religious energy has been spent on trying to make ourselves acceptable to God so that we can enter heaven. It's like having a never-ending mortgage debt that we'll never pay off. In contrast, what the writer of the Hebrews wants to tell us is that the life, death and resurrection of Jesus has so totally surpassed and transformed all these old imperfect practices that it has literally bridged that separation between earth and heaven, uniting us together. Instead of a priest offering imperfect sacrifices continually in a temple isolated from other people, Jesus made a single sacrifice of his own perfect life and gave all humanity free access to God's presence forever. This may not be something that connects with a modern reader. We are so used to the idea that our sins have been forgiven and that we can pray to God as easily as a child begs his mother for a present, that we may not quite comprehend just how distant and inaccessible and fiercely judgmental God would have seemed in the days when this letter to the Hebrews was written. Nineveh was threatened with complete destruction for their sins, for example. But now, because of Jesus Christ, all our fear and rejection, all our fear of rejection or failing to be good enough can be done away with. We're no longer stuck, stuck in the imperfect copy of heaven, but have access to the kingdom of heaven here on earth right now. This good news changes everything. No longer do we need to keep track of offences committed against us, our neighbours, and against God. Nor do we report to the local priest to offer sacrifices on our behalf. That's not what we're doing when we come together here on Sunday morning. Our Holy Communion is not an attempt to get God to forgive us and save us through sacrifices. We are already forgiven and adopted as part of God's family. Instead, communion is a celebration of those new relationships with God and each other that Christ's long-ago sacrifice has opened up to us. Even though sin is still a reality, so now is forgiveness. Our relationships no longer need to be rooted in fear of one another, keeping an eye on all those rules. We find that instead of human relationships being controlled by systems of punishment and retribution, humility and confession and kindness become a regular part of our life together. 
Just as the child who is certain of a parent's love will come forward in trust and security rather than hide in shame, so we move towards one another and towards God. Forgiveness creates intimacy between both God and one another. The community that is created out of this good news is one in which all are included, because all have access to heavenly perfection here and now. If sometimes it doesn't feel like that, just be thankful that we are no longer living in that age when your every misdemeanor would have been noted and recorded by religious officials and never forgiven until you had paid for them through the blood of animal sacrifice. The liberation that we now have because of Christ is the freedom of knowing God as loving, self-sacrificing parent, not as fearsome judge. It is this new kind of relationship that gives us the energy to pour ourselves into showing others the grace and forgiveness that we ourselves have received because of everything that Jesus Christ has done. Amen. Let's now stand to affirm our faith in God together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our time of prayer together. As is written on the last page of the welcome sheet, each time I say in these prayers, unfailing love is yours, Lord, we are invited to declare, you are our rock of refuge. Let us pray. Creator God, Lord of all creation, of water, earth, sky, and the whole universe. We praise you for flowing rivers, the rise and fall of mighty oceans, for rain that falls to quench and feed the land. Help us to draw from your wellspring with care and be wise caretakers of these sacred waters. We praise you for the richness of the earth, for the diversity of landscape and for the fruitfulness of the soil. Help us to tread lightly and be wise caretakers of this holy ground. We praise you for the skies, the winds, the air we breathe. At night we look to the heavens and see your glory reflected in every shimmering star. Help us to breathe in your grace, breathe out your hope and be wise caretakers of this vast expanse. Unfailing love is yours. Lord, you are our rock of refuge. Creator God, we are in awe of your creation, but we confess that we have taken your gifts for granted. We have failed to care for seas and the forests. We have broken our duty to steward the earth. Forgiving God, forgive us for the ways in which we contribute to this destruction. Forgive us for being greedy and not sharing earth's gifts. Forgive us for our lack of courage to resist endless consumerist growth. We thank you for your forgiveness and ask that the Holy Spirit guides us and changes us to be more like your Son. 
Gracious God, transform our hearts and minds that we may place the welfare of your earth before our convenience and our pocket. Help us to live for the world's healing and our own. Embolden us to challenge injustice and unsustainability in what we say and in what we do. Help us to be creative and resourceful as we look for ways to live in balance with the earth. Help us to work together to enable the restoration and flourishing of your creation. Help us to live for the world's healing and our own. Unfailing love is yours. Lord, you are our rock of refuge. Lord, we know that the climate crisis is already causing suffering in many parts of the world. We thank you for Shelterbox, Climate Stewards, Tear Fund and others caring for their, those areas of the world less privileged than us. Guide our world leaders and those in authority to address this climate crisis for the good of the earth and all the inhabitants and peoples of the earth. Speak through the earthquakes, wind and fire to us. We pray particularly for the ongoing actions and outcomes from the G7 Leaders Conference and the COP26 Climate Conference. We thank you for the progress that has been made and we pray for ways forward that honour your creation and restore hope for our fragile earth. You gave us life, Lord, and we pray this in your name. Unfailing love is yours, Lord, you are our rock of refuge. Lord, we thank you that you came down to earth and that through your Son you showed us your love and suffered with us and for us. Recalling your suffering with us and for us, we lift before you all those we know who are suffering in body, mind and spirit. Lord, among those who need our prayers, we remember in particular Julian, Ken, Margaret, Jill, Patricia, Kevin, Jeff, Tim, and all others known to us. Dear Lord, we lift before you those who are bereaved at this time, thinking especially of the family and friends of Ivan Bernalik and Stephen Lobb. And we pray for the family and friends of those whose year's mind falls at this time, especially James Garner, Lottie Widden, Ivy Harris, Paul Hendry, Margaret Tufnell. We do not understand your will, but pray that somehow your will be done, your love for all will be known, and your name glorified. Unfailing love is yours, Lord, you are our rock of refuge. And we pray for uh, the uh, Jennifer Nash and Paul Massey, who were married at St. Column Church yesterday, and we celebrate their union with them. And we look forward to Grace Raby, due to be baptized today in this church, being welcomed into your family. And we pray for her parents, Chris and Helen, and all those coming today, that they may know your blessing and experience your love. And I have here just two prayers from our prayer tree. There's quite a lot there, and I invite you to have a prayerful look at them whenever you have a moment. The first one, 
Eric Jane, missed by Anne. God bless. The second one. Lord, fill this place with your Holy Spirit. May all who worship here know Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour and serve him each new day. Show the love of Jesus to a broken world. May the Lord bless you. We pray for all of us in our churches in this benefice, this deanery, this diocese, and around the world, as we seek to love you and show your love in our community and to our visitors. We thank you for your generosity to us and pray for the grace to give generously to others. We thank you for all those involved in the On The Way process, in in particular for Helen, leading as our rector of this benefice, and for Margaret, representing the laity of this benefice. And we pray that we and they may be delighted by seeing their expectations exceeded by your love shining through us all. We pray for our bishops, Philip and Hugh, as they lead us, their flock, in this diocese. The teams that support them, our rural dean, Chris, with the responsibility he has for this area, and those who lead our services and worship in this benefice. In particular, Helen, Tess, Phil, Angela, Andrew, Mike, Pat, Pauline, and Ros. We pray too for our church wardens and all others with specific roles, that their burdens will be light and that they will know your love for them as they serve. And we pray for our PCC meeting on Tuesday, that those present may discern your will in that meeting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, there am I in the midst of them. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So let's now offer in our socially distanced manner each other a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Nancy. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. Our Eucharistic prayer continues on the separate sheet. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, 
Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and, taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Morgan and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. So draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. God of peace, whose Son Jesus Christ proclaimed the kingdom and restored the broken to wholeness of life, look with compassion on the anguish of the world, and by your healing power make whole both people and nations, through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. In a moment we're going to stand to sing our final hymn.
peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all those you love and care for, this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.